this Christmas service. And happy Christmas. And I hope that you will enjoy this Eucharist and be able to come and receive communion between, uh, between four o'clock and half past five this afternoon, this Christmas Eve. So let us begin this, this service by singing our opening carol, O Come All Ye Faithful.
whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave great power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word came, became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of his Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. A very happy and blessed Christmas to all of you. And I hope that in spite of everything, this is going to be a good Christmas for you. One of my Facebook friends from my former parish posted this sentiment about Christmas 2020. He said, I'd rather spend Christmas separated from my family and friends this year so we have the best chance of celebrating Christmas together next year. Many are echoing similar feelings. And yet, in the sadness of separation, most are posting gratitude for what is possible and hope for something better as we move into 2021. COVID and politics has pretty much dominated our lives this year. Many are feeling exhausted from the unprecedented disruption of normal life. Some have lost loved ones through COVID, cancer, strokes, accidents, or other illnesses. Some have lost jobs. Some have become homeless. Some have suffered broken relationships, broken friendships, broken homes. Just like in the ancient time of that holy night, this world is in need of healing. Creation is broken and sick. Our relationships with God and with one another are broken. We need Christmas. We need God to be in the midst of us, Emmanuel. We need the God who loved so much that he was willing to become one of us, God incarnate, to show what true, real, uncompromising love looks like. God sent his son Jesus, the God a world did not know, a God the world did not understand. God sent his son Jesus to be the Messiah, the Christ, the saviour of the world. Not in a grand triumphant show of power, but as a baby, born of a humble girl from Nazareth, born in a cattle shed, a smelly, animal barn with a feeding trough for a bed. John's Gospel does not tell the familiar nativity story. Instead, John lays out for us just who this baby is and what this incarnation, this becoming flesh, means for the world. This very human child is also very much God. John begins his gospel with the words, in the beginning. 
These words come straight from the very beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning. When there was nothing. But this is a new beginning. The God, the word of God, who was with God and is God from all eternity to all eternity, came to shine a new light into a world of darkness and despair, of sadness and pain, a world where there is injustice and greed and lack of concern for others. God in Christ Jesus has come into the world as one of us, to show us how we can experience the love of God for ourselves and also to show the love of God in the midst of what might seem hopeless, dead, terminally sick and irreparably broken. Jesus did not come to wave a magic wand and make everything better overnight. That would take away our freedom. That would take away the ability to choose that God gave us right from the start. It would take away the gift of autonomy. Instead, God gives us the gift of Jesus. Jesus came to experience for God's self what human life, human joys, and human suffering was like as a human being. And to show in his own life and to teach all who would listen how healing and transformation can take place even in the midst of suffering and despair. Jesus shone a light on all that needs to change in our hearts, in our lives, and in our society in order to draw back the curtain of darkness and let the light shine. The light of Christ is not a cold light. The light of Christ is a warm, embracing light. A light that emanates from an incredible, all-embracing, all-encompassing love. The light of Christ offers forgiveness. Unconditional forgiveness. The light of Christ offers hope, hope for something better, hope for something new, hope for something transforming in our lives. The light of Christ offers the possibilities and opportunities for justice and mercy and peace. And joy. By and through the incarnation, Christ becoming flesh, God taking on flesh, by and through that, we are called to become children of light, children of God's light. Born, not of flesh, nor of the will of human beings, but of God. If we accept that call to be born into Christ, we will be part of God's Christian family. And being part of God's Christian family, we get sent out 
into the world to shine God's light wherever we may be, wherever we can reach with that light. The light of Christ shining in us and shining out from us makes us see the injustices and the needs all around us. It takes our focus from ourselves into the world, near and far. And it causes us to find the fullest, most hopeful and most fulfilling meaning of life, both for ourselves and for others. And it can bring a deep joy as we reach out and give hope and give love by the things we do, the things we say. We celebrate this season of Christmas with festivities, even if those festivities this year are a little muted and we're a little distanced from those we love, but we still celebrate. We still celebrate trusting that through us, God's children, God can make miracles of light and love happen. As people of faith, we do not live without hope, as people of faith, we trust in God's ability to bring healing, to bring peace and joy in us and through us to the world, all of it and all who live in it. So let us leave the manger full of hope and singing with joy. Let us leave the manger committed to follow the light, the light and love that came down at Christmas, the way of Christ. I finish with a poem by Howard Thurman, an African-American theologian, teacher, and civil rights leader, and it's called the work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, and to make music in the heart. May we all celebrate the joy of the Christmas season and give thanks for the continuing presence of the Creator. May the light of Jesus bring new life into this world and may it shine brightly forever. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We, we believe, believe in, in one, one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The response for the prayers of the people this morning is hear our prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Savior, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect with with your love those who have no home, and all who live in poverty. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labor, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand those who we pray for, especially Jason, Tom, Michael, Stephanie, Marnie, Jody, Rachel, Clark, Stephen, Chad, Liza, Barbara, Sherry, Robert, Tori, Alice, Diane, Betty, Catherine, Chad, Fern, Jackie, Larry, Roy, Reuben, Diane, Bill, and Rafe, and all who are in pain or distress. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffer in the pain and sadness of our world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sang, Peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in this country and in all the world. Holy God, Hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby lying in a manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, Christians over the, over the world celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. Holy God, Hear our prayer. Father, in this holy night, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph, and all the saints, through him who is your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, Patty. <laughs>
thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection, we, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
with all whose lives you touch and all whom you love, this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. We shall now sing Silent Night, and I invite you maybe to dim your, your lights and light a candle while we sing it. Thank you. 